Hello everyone! This is Ninja Girl Sakadawin. Back with another Yashihime Princess Half Demon Season 2 review. This past Saturday, we got Season 2, Episode 9, Bayonaka the Visitor. Quite a good episode, honestly. It was mostly censored around Setsuna, which is a good thing. She got some good character development this episode. And we also got a little bit of plot development as well. Very little. Mostly involving Setsuna learning how to use her new Naginata a little better. But yeah, good episode overall. So, let's go over what happened, shall we? I guess I should start with Toa. Because while the episode is mostly about Setsuna, there is some stuff with Toa and Moroha that happens. So, let's just go over that real quick first. Of course, Toa is still with Riku and Rion. And they're by the river. Riku's trying to wash his eyes, hoping to see again, but it doesn't work. He does figure out, however, if he follows the scent of Toa's lavender hand cream, he can sort of kind of still see and sense her. Sort of. So that is one way he can still look out for her, and still protect her, and Rion, of course. So, good. Toa... She obviously still feels bad that he can't see, but Riku again tries to reassure her that it's actually a good thing because at least now Kitamata will not be able to see what they are doing. So, and as bad as being blind is, he is right. At least Kitamata can't spy on them. So, yeah. Otoha, meanwhile... She was still dealing with the Tanuki Demons. She was in her Benyasha form. She used her Crimson Dragon Wave. Which I thought had actually gotten those Tanuki Demons. But no. Once again, they make a joke of Monoha and have the Tanuki Demons send her attack right back at her. Knocking her right out. And Takachio and Hachi, they get blown away too. Unfortunately, I really wish it would stop doing this. I wish they would stop making a joke of Moroha because she deserves better. I'm sorry. I know everybody seems to like the twins, mostly. But for me, Moroha is the main character. I care the most about her. I'm sorry. That's just how I feel. I wish it would stop making a joke out of her. It is what it is. And I say this because they made a big deal last episode of how... There was a new and improved Benyasha, but this still seems to have happened. So, yeah. Because she's, she's unconscious, and since she was in her Benyasha form, she'll probably be out the whole day again. So, I just... I don't get why they insist on doing this. But, maybe they'll still pay off the new and improved Benyasha thing later. It's just annoying as somebody who really, really loves Moroha. So, yeah... We'll see. I hope that they'll do better for her in the upcoming episodes. We'll we'll see, though. But now, the main focus, which was what Setsuna was doing. She's, of course, still in that village with the other Demon Slayers. They're trying to get rid of these flaming bulls. And they need to talk to the local deity who had been sending them after the village. So, yeah. But before they could even try to do that, the flaming bulls attack again. This time they were more prepared though, because they had dug a trench, and Setsuna and Hisui get on Kilala and decide to lure them into the trench, the flaming bulls. They lure them in, and Kohaku also uses his exploding pots to set off an avalanche, and they kind of bury them in the snow, extinguishing their fire, keeping them at bay for the moment. So that's something. So, yeah. Things seem okay. But then, when her and Hisui land and she gets Lala, they actually get a bit ambushed and Zetsuna gets knocked out. And she's even surprised. She says before she falls unconscious that no one's ever gotten her from behind like that before. But, yeah. Nonetheless, she gets knocked out. And she is taken 
to the guardian deity who had been sending these flaming bull demons, Ayanaka. And she, of course, confronts him, wants to understand why he's doing this. And, yeah, he's actually not that bad of a person, it seems. He just, he's tired of everything, and he doesn't really trust humans or demons. But, since she's a half-demon, he does think that maybe, if she'll listen, maybe he will understand his story and, yeah, what he's been through. And Setsuna actually wants to listen. And when some of the other demon slayers and some of the villagers try and approach and help her, she actually tells them to stay back. And Mayonaka actually encases some villagers in some clay. But it's fine. It's not deadly. Once the clay dries up, those people will be free to go. But yeah. She wants to listen to the story. Ayanaka, I guess, trusts her enough as a half-demon that he thinks she'll listen and will understand. So, he tells a story. He was actually the guardian deity of that village's whole land. And he liked helping the people. He was actually very kind. He helped the people. He would help their land flourish. And, yeah. He was very benevolent at one point. But, one day, he was approached by the daughter of the village headman named Oharu. And she was praying to him for help because even though he had been doing great things for the village and helping it prosper, she was still saying that the people were struggling because her father was being very cruel to them Charging them taxes and taking their things away. They could barely afford to survive. Yeah. They couldn't fend for themselves. So, Ayonaka gives her the blessing of the five grains, which we saw in the last episode. Hands it to her and says, this should help. And she thanks him and is very, very grateful and heads back to her village. However, her father decides... Like with everything else, he wanted to take that blessing of the five grains for himself and keep it away from the people. So, yeah. Not cool. And Ayanaka had sensed that something was still wrong, so he actually went to the village in disguise and he meets up with Oharu again. Yeah, and you can tell that her father had done something. She doesn't fully explain, I don't think, but... Yeah. He basically just says, I need those grains back. And she actually agrees to help locate them and find them. Oh yeah, and I think she does say, my father sent them, so okay, yeah. She does tell him what had happened. So, yeah, she agrees to try to track the grains down and give them back. And despite her best efforts, she's unable to find it and unable to get it back. She keeps going back to Mayanaka, telling him, I'm so sorry, I keep looking, but I can't find it, no matter how hard I try. And slowly, they begin to fall in love. And she eventually says she wants to leave the village with him. And he actually agrees to that, but he still needs those grains back first. So, she goes home again, determined more than ever to find it. But... When the time comes that they had set to leave, she doesn't show up. Leaving Mayanaka heartbroken, and he decides to just leave on his own. And he feels completely betrayed. And years later, when he returns, he finds out Oharu had already died, and that the people of the land who lived on the land had already used up all of his blessing that he had given them. The land was already drying up, and very soon, that village would no longer be prosperous at all. Land would not help them anymore. You know. And he gets really angry. And this is what turns him into the form we see him as now. So, yeah. It's actually pretty heartbreaking. And then, 
we see who actually had knocked Sentinel out. It was one of the Northern Demon Slayers, and Mayonaka actually reveals that he's apparently his son. So, yeah. And he reveals that his mother had given birth and then died not long after, when he was like four or five years old. So, again, very sad. But very touched by the whole thing and very sad for Mayanaka. She wants to help him. And that causes her Naginata to react. And she sees a golden thread of fate. Not a red one, a yellow one. And at first she thinks, oh, am I supposed to cut this? But instead, she decides to grind her Naginata along it. And that's when she's able to see the whole story. That Oharu, of course, did try to get the grains back. Kept coming back day after day. And yes, even though he had already left, she did eventually get to where he lived. Ready to leave with him, but he had already fled. He had already gone. And it was too late. So, yeah. And she sees that this golden thread is connected to the five grains still. That's when she decides to cut it to free him from this anguish and this anger. And then, all of a sudden, a grave pops up from where the five grains were. And we see it's Oharu's body. And she had basically been sacrificed to be the new... Grains, the new five grain blessings. Blessing of the five grains, whatever you want to call it. And yeah. That kind of makes Mayanaka feel a little bit better, kind of. I mean, he's mad that she was sacrificed, obviously, but he is glad to know that she actually didn't betray him. That she did want to leave with him. And yeah. Her spirit reunites with him and they leave in peace. But this, of course, means that they can't use the five grains anymore, and the village will now be poor. So, yeah, the demon slayers leave, because they know they're not going to get paid. But Setsuna's still happy that she was able to help Mayanaka find out the whole truth and reunite them, even if she's gone. They can at least be reunited in spirit. So that's something. And she's very glad about it. But then... Right as they're about to leave, she gets a strange feeling. Right outside the village. And that's where the episode ends. So... Uh-oh. Something's about to go down. So yeah. Again, overall. Good, interesting episode. I found Mayanaka's story very, very heartbreaking and sad. But also very touching. So, yeah. I liked it. Very good episode. I guess I'd give it about... 8 out of 10, if I had to. Maybe a 7.5 at the lowest. Just not a bad episode overall. I like how Setsuna got some character development here. And she is learning to use her Naginata a little bit better. She's slowly starting to understand how it all works. So... Yeah, who knows when she may use this ability again in the future. You know, with the... Instead of instantly cutting the thread, gliding along it and seeing... You know... People's memories, I guess you could call it? I guess that's what you could say it is? See people's stories. See people's whole stories. And how things are bound together. So that'll be interesting if that does continue. So yeah... I think that will do it for this review, though. Once again, good episode. I say watch it. <laughs> but, the next episode looks to be even better. And it's going to be a two-parter. Not shown on the same day. But yeah, next episode is Battle of the New Moon, Part 1. And from the preview, we already have seen human Setsuna and Toa, so that's gonna happen. Which makes sense. The only reason she had never gone Setsuna, the only reason she had not gone through the new moon before, like Toa had, was because she had the dream butterfly thing going on, which Shishomaru took care of. So... Yeah. 
And for the preview, she actually looks pretty. So we'll see what happens there. And we're also getting a flashback with Inuyasha Kagome, Sango Moroku, the whole OG gang. And I guess Motoha's gonna be learning the story of what happened with these Snooki demons a long time ago. <laughs> so I am very, very much looking forward to that. I'm very excited. Especially to see Inuyasha and Kagome again, because I love them. But yeah, that will do it for this video. That will do it for this review. If you enjoyed this review, leave a like, share around if you want. If you want to follow me on Twitter or support the channel on Patreon, which I would be forever grateful for, both links will be in the video description below. And yeah, next episode looks like it's going to be very good. Let's hope it is. But until then, I will see you guys later.